All right, good afternoon. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to present our story today. We are a public traded company. Here's our forward-looking statement. So Fate Therapeutics, we're, uh, this is our hometown. We're headquartered in La Jolla and have been active since 2007, so we've been at this a while. Um, we're, again, as I said, publicly traded with a market cap around a billion. Um, we're, you know, our, our focus, or our, our goal is leveraging world expertise, our world expertise in IPS-derived cell therapies to unlock the full potential of, of off-the-shelf cell therapies for cancer and uh, um, immune disorders. We have 180 people um, with expertise in, in research, development, manufacturing. Um, we are well capitalized with 320 million in cash. Um, and at our current burn rate of 20 million per quarter, that'll take us um, uh, you know, three to four years in the future, we'll, which will allow us to continue to invest in this platform as well as hit some key milestones for some of the products highlighted in the, in the pipeline chart there. We have currently, we have three active INDs for IPS-derived cancer immunotherapies. Um, we, today I'll tell you about some initial clinical experiences with an IPS-derived NK cell. Um, where um, you know, initial observations have shown that they're safe and well tolerated. We also have a robust pipeline with additional near-term INDs, including the first IPS-derived CAR T cell, as well as other uh, engineered products. So CAR T cell therapy has been a, a major breakthrough in the battle against cancer, and this was you know, most recently highlighted in the 2017 approvals of Chimera and Yescarta. And these approvals you know, drove a, an explosion worldwide of clinical trials, um, really building off this initial success and seeing how uh, many different areas we could take this amazing new technology. That said, it's clearly early innings for this, um, this, this field, and um, there are significant challenges that need to be overcome, such as impaired starting with autologous CAR-T therapy. And this is you know, well known, but impaired starting material, random and variable genetic engineering, complex logistics, you know, limited patient access, access, you know, heterogeneous drug products that vary significantly from patient to patient, you know, significant cost and, and single dose limitations as well as time, you know, vein to vein time challenges that are, are, are really limiting. Many of the challenges described here um, for autologous cell therapy are being addressed as we move from patient derived cells to healthy donor derived allogeneic cells. Um, that said, even with ha um, perform that said, one of the key limitations of allogeneic cell therapy is performing complex gene editing on, on batches of, of billions of, of cells, and this is highlighted with this inset here. And what it shows is three different editing technologies, going from rather simple editing procedures where you're trying to put a single car construct in, to more complex gene editing where you're doing track targeting and inserting other genomic features. And the key observation here is the gene editing becomes more complex, your efficiencies of properly edited cells um, goes, goes down. So we see this as a, a significant remaining challenge even as we move from autologous to allogeneic. Shown here is, is, a, uh, is a, a, a neat snapshot generated by Wells Fargo of the competitive landscape of the adoptive cell therapy um, um, space. And virtually the majority of companies and products highlighted here are derived from either patient-derived or healthy donor-derived um, sources of, of, of material that goes into the engineering that goes as, into the therapy. For the better part of the last decade, Fate Therapeutics has been developing uh, and pioneering a, a novel manufacturing approaches, approach that uses IPSC cells as a starting material to generate off-the-shelf IPS-derived NK and T cells which we believe is, is unique, uh, potentially highly disruptive, and, and can address many of the limitations that were described on the previous slide. So how does this work? So we start with um, a donor starting material, and we select donors, or the material we usually use is cord blood or fetal foreskin fibroblasts. Um, and again, we're looking for a single donor that will be able to treat, create a universal product that can create, treat virtually all, all patients. Once you have the, um, the, the, the starting material, we then reprogram it into an IPS cell line. This is then used to perform the gene editing step. 
And the nice thing is we experience the same level of heterogeneity by editing batches of iPSCs, but the advantage of having a cell line in the manufacturing process is you could actually sort through individual clones and find a clone that has the desired genetic attributes. That clone, once identified, can be converted into a master cell bank, which will be used as a renewable starting material for the lifetime of that, that product. So once you have your master cell bank, um, again, these iPSCs can be turned into virtually any of the 230 tissue types in the human body. At FATE, we've really focused in on making um, cells in the blood lineage. And through a 40-day process, you get a scalable, cost-effective um, manufacturing and, and outcomes, hundreds to thousands of doses of iPS-derived NK cells or T cells that, again, can be used to treat patients in an off-the-shelf, universal fashion. You know, so some of the key attributes here is it does not require patients or cells, you know, eliminates the stochastic editing and variability associated with pool engineering. Um, you get consistent, reliable, cost-effective, um, you know, manufacturing, and it's really nice scalability, and again, it creates a crowd-preserved uh, product form that can be uh, delivered in an off-the-shelf fashion. So this is just a, a snapshot of the manufacturing process. Um, here you start with a vial of a million iPSCs from the master cell bank, and this is put through a, a 40 day process that will turn that into 10 to the 11th or 10 to the 12th INK or, or IT cells. This goes through a stepwise fashion where we really mimic the differentiation that these cells go through in the body. Um, we're 10 days in, you've generated CD34 cells, NK progenitor cells, and finally you have highly homogeneous population of NK cells with all of the uh, uh, markers and, and cytotoxic activities of, of natural, um, normal NK cells. So this is some of the specifications we've, we've uh, established um, uh, is for the GMP manufacturing. And um, again, some of the highlights, the take home message here is this is just a scalable, cost effective way to manufacture um, NK cells and, and T cells. Um, it also it's nice that just, just this week we announced the opening of a, a GMP facility here at our uh, La Jolla headquarters. And so this is going to give us a lot more control and scalability of um, the manufacturing process. So the second main advantage of having a cell line on the front end of your manufacturing is it enables um, uh, complex gene editing um, procedures to be performed. So this is, this is highlighted here. This is just an example of a, a parental iPSC population where we've inserted a, a car into the track locus. And in this example, the car expression is highlighted on the x-axis where these guys have picked up the transgene and, and this population is not. But this just highlights the type of heterogeneity you get when you're editing on a batch level. So here, the next step is not to put that into a patient as your product, but it's to sort individual cells from this edited population into wells of a microtiter plate. These individual cells grow into uh, you know, populations after 48 hours, you see little clusters, and by a few weeks you have um, you know, high numbers of clonal populations uh, that can then be screened to look for, for clones that have the desired on-target edit, edits without any off-target editing. Um, we'll even look for um, uh, their ability to perform in the differentiation process. And, and basically you select a clone and you end up with a, a highly homogeneous population where every single cell is, is properly edited. And this is an example where you're doing one edit but it becomes even more extreme when you're doing three, four, five, six edits where you can then go screen through thousands of clones and find one that has the exact configuration you're looking for. Um, so I'll spend the remaining time here um, telling you about a few of the products that we're developing in this IPS-derived NK and T cell um, uh, products. So the, the first product candidate is FT500, and this is a non-engineered IPS-derived NK cell. Um, we've been extensively characterized um, with respect to the markers and, and cytolytic and cytokine production activity, so it's truly a, a, a really powerful NK cell with a potent anti-cancer activity. This is a picture of the first patient who was actually treated um, here at UCSD. And um, the clinical schema is, is we do a, 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 a lymphoconditioning two-day regimen of flu psi. And then through a two, two cycles, the patient, each patient receives six doses of the iPS-derived NK cell. And the first dose course, each, each of the six doses is 100 million cells. Uh, we then step into a, a higher dose where each, each of the six doses is at a 300 dose uh, level. So regimen A is, is a, um, a monotherapy with advanced solid tumors in a salvage setting. 
Um, regimen B is a little bit more interesting. Here we're um, administering the INKs in combination with checkpoint inhibitors for patients who have failed the therapy. And we're specifically interested in the subset of these uh, checkpoint failures that are class one negative, which we believe are gonna be really good targets for NK therapy. We've previously reported um, that we've cleared um, in the three by three uh, escalation study that we've cleared dose cohorts one and two for the regimen A and, and dose cohort one for regimen B. Uh, at ASH, we're gonna present comprehensive clinical data on 10 to 12 patients from this FT500 study. Um, and you know, to date, what we've reported is that this multi-dose uh, clinical, experience, clinical experience with IPS drive and K-cells has been safe and well tolerated. The second product that um, where we have a, an IND is, has been cleared and we're currently recruiting patients is actually the, the, the first ever genetically engineered IPS derived cell therapy to make its way into the clinic. In this case, we've, in, we've introduced a high affinity CD16 receptor, which is designed to enhance the ADCC activity of this product. What's highlighted here is um, um, What's, what's highlighted here is, um, again, it's a clonal master cell bank, and this is CD56. We have 99.8%, so a very highly homogeneous uh, population of, of NK cells that all, all express this, the CD16 transgene. This is going to be a, a similar multi-dose regimen that described with the, the first NK trial. Uh, we're going to be doing a monotherapy arm in AML, and then we're going to be doing a combination arm uh, in, uh, for, uh, in combination with Rituxan for patients who failed Rituxan. Uh, the third IND um, that was just cleared two weeks ago is, is this is where it starts to get exciting that really leverages the, the capabilities of this platform where we've now introduced three pieces of functionality. There's a high affinity uh, CD16 receptor, a CAR, CD19 CAR molecule that's been specifically optimized for NK biology, and a IL-15 receptor fusion that's being designed to enhance the persistence um, of these NK cells. So again, this IND cleared within the 30-day period review window, and we are on track to treat the first patient this year. Um, again, this, this over here, it, it's nice when you could flip through the channels and see that you're near uh, highly homogeneous for the editing of, of all three of the genetic elements, so the CAR, CD16, and the IL-15. So this just really shows the ability to create complex edited cells that are, are very uh, homogeneous in composition. One of the big challenges in the CAR-19 field is, is relapse due to antigen escape. And so this highlights a, 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 a preclinical experiment where the the, the, um, the red cells are CD19 positive, the green cells are 19 negative. And if you make a mixture of these and, and treat it with just the, the FT596 alone, it does a great job eliminating the CD19 positive cells, but the, you get relapse with the, the, the 19 negative uh, green cells. In contrast, if you repeat that experiment but include rituxan that goes after CD20, so this is an example of a du dual targeting strategy, um, uh, we're able to eliminate all the cancer. So, we're super excited about this dual targeting um, product, which again will be in the clinic uh, hopefully this year. Finally, everything we're doing with NK cells, we're also doing with T cells. We've been working with Michelle Satterline for the past three years. Um, he first published the ability to take an IPSC and create a, a T cell in 2013. We've built off that pioneering new work and we've incorporated a lot of the tools such as track targeting and his new 1XX co-stem into this product called FT819. Uh, we're gonna file this IND at Q, the first quarter of next year. And again, this is just a snapshot of what it looks like when you're doing track targeting with the car at sort of the pool level where you have high degrees of homogeneity. Here's your, your car targeted, and this is the, the not targeted, and these are the ones that have remaining TCR. In contrast, when you pick a clone, you have high degrees of homogeneity where you have, virtually, you have zero remaining TCR and 100% of the cells are car positive. Um, we have a, a partnership with Ono that's in the T-cell space. So this is IPS-derived T-cells. It's a two-product, four-year deal where we're gonna build off this 819 backbone. The first thing we're doing is adding in the B cell malignancy space is we're adding additional edits to enhance persistence, you know, address antigen escape and checkpoint resistance. The second product is after solid tumors. We're here, Ono is providing a novel binder and we're now we're putting in additional edits to overcome secreting gauges, the tumor microenvironment and improve trafficking. 
This is, I think, is a snapshot of the future. And unless you have a cell line on the front end of your manufacturing process, I think it's going to be uh, really challenging, if not impossible, to generate this type of highly edited uh, off-the-shelf product. So with that, I would like to um, just say we're really excited about this, this, this new platform of using IPSCs as a starting material for manufacturing off-the-shelf, highly edited you know, uh, T-cells and NK products, and we look forward to sharing clinical data in the coming year. And I'd like to thank the uh, fantastic people at Fate Therapeutics, along with our wonderful academic collaborators, and thank you very much for your attention.